There's a saying here in Sweden that goes genvägar är senvägar and basically or roughly translated that means shortcuts are detours and the idea behind that is basically that usually when you try to save time by cutting corners in some sort of way you usually end up actually spending way more time trying to cut those corners. And I do like the idea of that and there's definitely some real wisdom behind that statement in certain contexts. But I've also generally found the opposite to be true more often. So in the true programmer spirit of taking the path or looking for the path of least resistance, today I'm gonna to show you how to take your programmer productivity and efficiency to the next level by maximizing your shortcut usage. So let's go. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you the best and most useful keyboard shortcuts that I've found. And then I'm gonna share with you a little, sort of like a secret way to take this type of workflow to the next level beyond this. So let's start off with the first one. And uh, this entire list is based on what I use the most personally. And it's also based on the suggestions that you guys came up with to my community post that I posted here on YouTube a while back. So there's lots of really good ones on this list. And the first one is, F2. And this is a command that can be used to refactor your code. So basically renaming a variable and renaming a variable in your code can be super tedious because you basically have to rename it in all the different spots where it's used, which is super prone to errors and stuff. So F2 allows you to select a name and rename it everywhere. Crazy useful. Number two is selecting a section of text and pressing tab or shift plus tab. This might not be a key bind or a keyboard shortcut per se, but it sort of is, and I also know that most people know of it, but I kind of had to include it since it's like one of the most useful keyboard shortcuts. This is used to indent large sections of code, and it's super useful when you want to remove a for loop or an if statement or something where you need to unindent or indent a large section of code. The next one is control plus K plus D. This command will format the code, basically meaning that it will make it look a lot nicer in the file that you're working on. I actually saw a really helpful tip on Reddit where someone said that they changed this keybind to be control plus D plus D, which means that it can be done one handed. So that means that it kind of is a little bit easier to just do a lot faster. And to be honest, I kind of forget this one really easily, but it is super useful and it's a real time saver. Number four is control plus shift plus T to reopen closed tabs. This one was an actual game changer for me, and this was actually suggested by one of you guys, and I find it super useful, and it's become one of my favorite commands. And the idea is basically, you know when you accidentally exit out of a tab, and you're like, ah oh, shit, I kinda needed all the stuff in that tab. This basically solves that for you. So when you run this command, you basically restore that tab to the original state, which means that you also have the history of that tab so you can back traverse through the previous sites that you visited in that tab, which is super useful and it actually saves my ass several times a week. And next we have number five, which is control plus tab for switching between tabs in your browser or any other window. Again, most people know this one, but for everyone who doesn't know it, it would be insane to skip over it since it's super useful. So if you don't use it, then start using it. And you can also add shift to actually go backwards. Then we have number six, which is control plus arrow key right or arrow key left. And this will move you by word instead of by letter, which makes moving through your code or just any text a lot faster. And then for number seven, we have alt plus right arrow, which moves the cursor to the next differentiator. This one is similar to the previous one, but it's especially useful for programming. And that is because it allows you to move between differentiating stuff within your code. And since in a lot of languages we name stuff like this, name of something, if I want this to instead be name of car, then I can use alt plus right arrow until it stops at the capital S for something. And then I can change that part of the name to car. Alt plus arrow key right until we get to the S. Then we can use the next command, which is alt plus shift plus right arrow key, which will select until the end of the word. So now we have something selected. 
and can simply write car. And now we've changed the word and now we can move on to the next keyboard shortcut, which is F8, which moves the cursor to the next or to the previous error if you add in shift. This is very handy when you're making a change to your code somewhere and some error shows up somewhere else. This way you can just quickly move between the different errors and it makes it super fast and super simple. I also want to point out that some of these key bindings will be different for your specific text editor. So I would suggest like Googling your specific text editor to find out which key bindings do these specific things if they don't work straight out of the gate because most text editors actually have these functionalities, but it just might be different key bindings. Another extremely useful thing for speeding up your workflow is gonna to be to have auto completion for your text editor. So having a really solid auto completion plugin for your text editor of choice is gonna be a game changer for productivity. And tab nine is a really good choice here. And they're also very kindly sponsoring this video. Tab nine is an AI powered code completion tool that saves you a ton of time when writing your code. And this is something that I highly recommend trying out. And since it's just a plugin, it's super easy to install and get started with. It supports pretty much all programming languages and has a free forever basic plan that's aimed at developers who are looking to speed up their workflow and save time. Tab9 does offer a pro plan that offers a GPU powered model for better and unlimited completions, as well as some other really cool features. Tab9 is also really good when it comes to privacy and allows you to either run your completions locally on your own machine, or you can choose to run them in the cloud, in which case your code will be encrypted and then deleted. It also uses deep learning to get familiar with the projects that you're working on so that it can give you the most relevant suggestions for auto completions. Compared to the old school built-in auto completion that comes with most text editors, where the suggestions are often completely irrelevant to the project or line of code that you're working on, Tab9 can even provide auto completions for to-do comments based on the comments above them, which is just crazy. So I highly recommend checking this out. If you like the idea of speeding up your workflow with keybinds, then this should be perfect for you. So check it out at the link in the video description. They've also provided a promo code, Holden with capital letters, that will give you a 50% discount on your first year on the pro plan. Number nine, control plus shift plus F10. And this is similar to the previous one. You can use this to find out where a variable was declared. And this is really nice when you find some variable somewhere that you think should be doing one thing, but for some reason it does something else. In that case, you can use this command to see if this variable really is an int. And maybe you'll find out that it's actually a string, so that's why it's acting weird and lots of more use cases. And then for number 10, we have another really well-known one, but super useful. And this is control plus backspace or control plus delete. And this will remove an entire word. And for number 11, we have shift plus end or shift plus home, which will select from the cursor to the end or the start of the line. Something we do a lot of when programming is actually copy pasting different things. Now, whether we should do that or not, that's a different question, but it can also be things like URLs or API keys or things like that. And another thing that we do is like removing or editing large sections of text. And for that, you usually need to be able to select these sections of text. So making the selecting of different sections of text easier will make your workflow a lot faster. And then we have number 12, which is control plus P, which will go to a specific file. And this is a perfect example of the fact that all these hotkeys and shortcuts are basically so that you spend more time on the keyboard and less time with the mouse. And this command basically takes away the need to use the mouse to switch between different files. And then we have number 13, which is F12. And this will move you to a specific class that has been declared somewhere. And this is really useful for when you need to make a change to a specific class. Okay, now let's just go through a few super quick ones that I think most people have heard of, but that I think still are worth mentioning. Number 14, control plus S to save the file and add in shift to save all unsaved files. Number 15, control plus C to copy and control plus P to paste. Number 16, control plus F to search for different things. Number 17, control plus Z to undo a change, add in shift to redo that change. 
So most people kind of know those ones, so that's why I went through them super fast. But now let's go through one that I find super useful and that is such a time saver for me that I actually use daily and sometimes multiple times a day. And this is number 18, which is the Windows button plus Shift plus S. And this is for screenshotting. So this just makes taking screenshots super simple. Okay, so in the beginning of this video, I promised that I would share with you a sort of what, what I would call a trade secret type of way to take this sort of workflow to the next level yet again. And that is by using what I would call micro automations. And that is essentially by programming your own keybinds. So this is something that I'm gonna make a video on in the future, so subscribe if you wanna see that. And the idea here is essentially that you take something that's one of your like daily tasks that you repeat several times a day or several times a week, and you basically create a keybind for that task. And one of my favorite examples of this that I didn't come up with myself is to combine the control shift and the C button to create a auto Googler. So essentially if you select the text and then you press control shift C, it will automatically Google that text. And that's gonna be super useful for Googling different errors in your code or whether it's a quote or a URL somewhere. Uh, just a super useful keybind for me. So that's one example of how you can take a task and create your own keybinds to automate that task. Another is to create a keybind for opening up a certain site or a certain file that you open up a lot. Your email, for instance, YouTube, Google Drive, text editor of choice, music player, etc. These will be keyboard shortcuts or keybinds that are user specific to you. And most keyboard shortcuts or keybinds are kind of generic in a way because they're meant to be useful for most people. So they're not like hyper useful for any specific person, but by creating your own keybinds for your own tasks, you can create hyper useful keyboard shortcuts. And that's the way to take your own workflow to the next level. The question is, how do you know what to create a keybind for? And this is actually fairly hard and takes some awareness but you basically just need to try to think about what you do when you do things and see if you can find something that you do all the time or if it's something that's just a one-time occurrence or very infrequent occurrence. If you find something that you do in the exact same way multiple times per day or week, then that could be automated by creating your own keybind. I have one that basically opens up a specific Google Drive folder where I write these scripts. Again, I'll make a video on that in the future where I'll create some of these shortcuts for myself and show you how I actually do that and how I go about it in more detail. All right, so that's it for this one and I hope you enjoyed it and that you got some ideas for some new keyboard shortcuts to try out and that you actually start implementing them in your workflow. And uh, there's like a myriad of these sort of keyboard shortcuts. So feel free to leave a comment if there's something that you feel like I missed that you think is super useful or any other sort of hot tips that you have. And um, yeah, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.